Hello, YouTube friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, today I want to talk with you about whether or not we should go cheap or whether we should splurge and go with expensive options when setting up. Our so let's go ahead and talk about uh, go cheap or go expensive. Let's go ahead and jump right into that. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to, uh, to hit that, that bell, that notification bell and the subscription and, uh, and be sure to rate the video that, that tells YouTube that you're getting something out of the channel and encourages YouTube to share the channel with other fish keepers like you and me and, uh, helps the channel to grow. And so I appreciate when you do that. Thank you. And remember, we have a 100% full refund policy here at the channel. <laughs> So um, let's go ahead and get into it here. And this is based on a recommendation. Well, it's based on two things. First of all, Brock Beekman. Brock Beekman over in New Jersey is setting up some tanks. And he asked me whether he should go with, uh, you know, the expensive splurge option and go with high end across the boards or, uh, or go with inexpensive alternatives. And uh, I also was thinking about it because I had ordered up some of these. These are those, um, the, this is the evaporation covers that I use on top of my tanks. You can certainly use glass. You can use um, other materials like acrylic, things like that, and uh, factory-made things and custom-made things. And I've been using these, these cheap, uh, inexpensive uh, evaporation, plastic evaporation sheets. You can cut them and shape them. These are massive ones. Look at the size of this thing. Like... I don't know what four feet maybe. Anyway, these are really large. I get them at a, at a company called H two O, and uh, but it is it is a cheap it is a cheap or inexpensive alternative to uh, putting something like uh, cut and polished glass on the top of a rimless tank like the one you see here. The uh, but I do want to put something on it uh, for evaporation and also to help with any fish that might might try and jump. Even though it has been open on the top for over a week and I've uh, fortunately had no no loss due to jumping. So um, I have several points on this topic that I want to cover with you. Let's start off talking with uh, about tanks. Now certainly if you want to go with a with a, a medium to small size tank, uh, why not wait for one of those uh, dollar per gallon sales at the at the uh, at the big box store? and uh, pick up a tank there or pick up a, a, a tank on sale from your local fish store. But when you start to get up up, up into these larger sizes, uh, certainly uh, maybe a hundred, uh, you know, 125 on up, uh, you can get into a lot of cost. And that's, 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 that's the realm where people start to think about whether they should go with a new tank or whether they should go with a used one. A used tank is gonna save you a lot of money. 50%, 75%, uh, depending just how desperate the person is. The people who bought my tanks when I moved from California to Nashville, the people who bought my tanks got a great deal because I was selling everything. I was selling tanks, decor, pretty much everything, fish. And uh, I arrived here pretty much w with a clean slate, except for a couple canister filters and some maybe some plastic plants, things like that. But otherwise, uh, I sold everything off. So. It was a uh, it was a buyer's market, and they got some really good deals. So, um, if your budget allows, and you're the type of person who wants everything brand new, and you want to be the first one to use it, you know you you like that new car smell, then yes, uh, save the money, and uh, and get yourself new stuff. Otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna feel a bit compromised, and uh, but. If you're like me and uh, you like to save money wh where you can, uh, shop around and try and get the best deal. Now, when I was in California, I, I wanted acrylic tanks, not just because they have a better see-through quality to them. Uh, they are less um, opaque or more see-through than glass. Even though this low iron glass on the front of this, this tank this low iron glass is very see-through. And so, um, and I would put it up against acrylic in, uh, in just the transparency of it. 
the main reason I needed acrylic or wanted acrylic tanks in, in California was because I was on wood floors and uh, these, these were suspended floors and I had considerations about weight. And uh, there was a 150 gallon acrylic tank that one gentleman around my age and myself, we both moved it uh, from, from a back bedroom all the way through the house to his truck when he bought it, 150 gallon acrylic tank two people moved it and we didn't have too much of a problem with it. The, uh, this glass tank, 90 gallons and granted it is extra thick glass, but, um, this tank, it took four, four people to lift it and put it up on the stand. So huge difference. And that's empty. That's an empty tank. So if weight is a consideration, consider going acrylic. Now acrylic is going to cost you a lot more so if your budget let's say you want a hundred gallon tank you're gonna pay probably around a thousand dollars if you want it new if you get it used and you really inspect it and it doesn't have scratches an acrylic tank of around a hundred gallons you can pick that up for three to four hundred dollars used just be sure that it's not scratched or scuffed if that's the problem with acrylic you can get areas that are buffed or scratched and they can be very very distracting especially if they're on the front panel now if you buy a glass tank and you decide to go with a used one and again a used glass tank will save you a lot of money but if that glass tank is let's say 10 years or older consider doing a reseal there are lots of videos on YouTube on how to reseal an aquarium I've done a reseal several times. It's not that hard. So, um, and it gives you a lot of peace of mind knowing that that tank is rock solid. You don't know what it's been through. You don't know if they tried to move it while it was full or if they jarred it or if it's got, uh, it's, if it's going, it's about to leak. And so you don't want that to happen. So uh, give yourself the peace of mind on an older glass tank. Go ahead and do a reseal. Usually not something to worry about with acrylic tanks. Uh, sometimes you can get some bubbles in the seams of an acrylic tank. If you see a tremendous amount of bubbles uh, in the seam of an acrylic tank, I would probably pass on it. I wouldn't buy it now that I know more about acrylic tanks. I do love the uh, Clear for Life tanks with the curved fronts. Those are very nice. You have no seam to worry about uh, you know, coming undone in the front because it's curved acrylic, only seams at the back where it meets up with a straight plate. So, um, on the aquariums, depending on your budget, depending on your temperament, depending on your needs, whether you have, you know, floors that, that may not support the weight, or maybe you're leasing or, you know, you don't want to damage the floors and, uh, or you don't care about the weight, then go ahead, go with glass and it'll save you a lot of money. When you go to move it, you're going to wish it was acrylic, but very often when we position our tanks, we don't move them except when we're moving or after we've sold them or something like that. Now let's talk a little bit about something as simple as lighting. You, there's a, a wide range of lights available from very, very expensive uh, lighting, like the kind you'll see uh, the saltwater community use for coral, uh, you know, for reef tanks. Some of these lights, one unit can cost three, $400. Uh, for me, I've been very, very happy with uh, your less expensive full spectrum LED lights. And um, I've been using and been very happy with Beamsworks. Beamswork. Beamswork LEDs full spectrum. That's what I have on the 55 gallon tanks behind me here. But most re uh, recently, I was approached by uh, a company called Hyger, H Y Y G E R, and Hyger. Uh, sent me some lights to try out, and I will say I love the lights. They come with a timer, and the timer has a built-in memory, so it rec it remembers when you've turned them on, when you've turned them off, and it, it starts to program itself, and uh, it has a daylight function, so you get like a sunrise, and you also have a, 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 a sunset, so the fish don't get shocked with a sudden change of, um, of lighting from bright to dark or from dark to bright. And I think that that's kind of cool. I mean, sometimes the, the fish get startled, they bang into something, they, 
they uh, scrape an eye or you know, hurt themselves and uh, or injure themselves or jump, you know. So <clears throat> if you can have something like that, it's good. What about decor? You know, with decor, you can go with inexpensive uh, play sand. You can go with uh, blasting sand, right? You can go with inexpensive options from your from your hardware store, your Home Depot, uh, or you can go with the you know the Carib C, the the the, the higher end uh, substrates. They're designed specifically for aquariums. Uh, in this aquarium here, I have a lapis luster combined with a Imaginarium black sand, and uh, the pieces are, are are rounded, and and so for fish that are sifting through the sand a lot, like your geophagus and, and your African cichlids, you probably want something that's been tumbled and doesn't have sharp edges that could possibly be an abrasive to the fish. But some people tell me they've used blasting sand, you know, diamond, black diamond blasting sand for years and have had no issues whatsoever. So uh, maybe I'm wasting money in that area something to consider. So you can go high-end substrate, low-end substrate. You can also uh, go with rocks from your local rock quarry, rocks that you that you pick up next to the river, uh, things like that, that you really give, do a real good cleaning on. Or you can go to the, to the local fish store and get rocks that have been sort of certified as, as good for an aquarium. And you're gonna pay a little more. I mean, the rocks I have in here you know, what you see here, those are rocks from a local fish store. The uh, driftwood is from the local fish store. The, the cave is from, is, is from my friends at Underwater Galleries. This arrangement of driftwood and plants is from Elite Cichlids. So um, everything is, is sort of fish certified. So you have a combination of uh, medium and high end on that, on the decor of this tank. Let's talk a little bit about filtration. Uh, filtration, you can go from a sponge, if you don't mind a sponge sitting in your tank. Very inexpensive. The cost of, of, of an air pump and a sponge, very, very inexpensive. And, um, or you can go with a combination like I have back here. That's a, that's an expert Matic, expert Matic sponge and, uh, and powerhead combination, as well as aerator or bubbler. So you have a, a bubbler, a sponge filter, and a powerhead all in one. So you're moving a lot of water, you're creating some surface breakup for oxygenation, and you have sponges that are uh, serving as, as both uh, mechanical filtration, but also a home for beneficial bacteria. You can pick up a filter like that for 40 bucks or less, anywhere from 20 to $40. Now, from there, we jump up into uh, hang-on back filters, which I, I like a lot. They're very easy to work on. They hold a good amount of media. I have on this tank, I don't know if you can make it out in the back there, I have a Marineland, a Marineland um, 400. It's an Emperor 400, and it's uh, I think it does a great job. And I might end up putting two Emperors on this tank and removing the expert matic so I don't have that white object in the back. If expert matic would make that filter in black, I think it'd be a lot, a lot nicer uh, for the kind of backgrounds that I like to use on my tanks. So um, I might end up going with two marine lands. That'll give me a lot of filtration. I'll be under a hundred dollars. I'll be able to rotate the servicing of the filters, so I'm never really um, without filtration and not messing with both filters at once. So um, from there, you can go up to things like canisters and some filters. Now with a canister, you can go with your lower end, your sun suns, all the way up to things like your fluvals and uh, fluvals are, in my mind are kind of like the, t the high end. Of course, your eheims are up there as well. You're gonna pay a lot of money. The, those, those canisters have the advantage over a hang-on back filter in that they're completely silent. Even though this hang-on back filter, in my mind, is completely silent, I have used hang-on back filters like, like Whispers, and which I think it's kind of funny. They call themselves Whisper, but it's the noisiest hang-on back filter I've ever had. Uh, the, uh, 
I feel this one is very quiet. There are lots of them out there, lots of companies like Seachem and I believe Fluval and other companies do make hang on back filters where you'll pay $100 for one unit. I've been very happy with what I get out of these marine lens. They don't sponsor my channel. They don't send them to me for free. And uh, I just happen to like them. So you have a spectrum on your hang on back filters. And then when you get to your canister filters, which are very quiet, unless they're maybe not set up right or they're malfunctioning, uh, hang on, uh, the, the canister filters are out of sight. All you have is an input output in the aquarium which is good with your hang on backs. All you have is the one, the one input, right? So, so for hiding equipment, that's pretty superior. The problem with, with a canister filter is, is they're bulky. Now, granted, you don't have to service them that often. They can go for a while. They can go for up to three months. You have a pre-filter on them, maybe even longer, right? A filter over the intake. But um, the problem I found with them is that they are bulky. They're hard to move around. Uh, I'd have to pick, if I had a, a big fluval underneath this tank, I'd have to pick it up and move it out because it's one of, this tank has a, uh, a door that hangs on the front, right? So you have a, a, a lip on the bottom. You have, you have a, you have a section on the bottom. I'd have to pick up and go over it. So that would be a, a, a bit of a hassle, uh, with a big canister filter, like an FX6 or, um, you know, a, maybe a big 704B, Sun Sun 704B. Um, Eheims don't seem so large or so or so bulky, but they can be, the lar the bigger units, the big pro units can be pretty big. And, uh, but again, a wide spectrum in there. Am I convinced that a Fluval is far superior to a Sun Sun? Not necessarily, and I can get two Sun Suns for the price of one Fluval. So, you know, I don't know. I think I'm, I'm kind of 50 50 on that one. I, I, I have had valves on my Fluval fail, the purge valve, the valve on top. And I've had minor leaks related to O ring issues on Sun Suns. So um, if you want to save the money, go with Sun Suns. Just like with power heads or wave makers. If you want to save money with a wave maker, go with a Sun Sun. It may not run as long, it may not be as quiet, but it'll definitely do the job for probably a third the price of what you pay for a higher end unit, okay? Uh, if you're gonna have a canister, and I don't care if it's an expensive canister, if it's an Eheim, Fluval, Sun Sun, put it in a, in a Rubbermaid container and put a water sensor in there that'll tell you if there's a leak. Because the way canisters are designed, the way they siphon from the tank, if you, if you've taken several hours to discover a leak, you're gonna have a lot of water on your floor. So put your canisters inside of a plastic container of some kind and buy a very inexpensive water sensor that will either trigger an alarm or even send, they, they even have some that'll send you a text and uh, tell you that there's a water problem. So uh, otherwise, besides that, I like canisters. I think they're good and uh, you can go high end, go with your Eheimer Fluvals or go with your Sun Suns, your less expensive units. I think you'll be okay. So um, one last bonus tip here that I'll go over with you. And uh, and this is one that I wouldn't necessarily uh, compromise on. With just about everything I've talked about, I think you would be okay with high-end, brand new or used, or um, or medium or low end, I th I think I think you'd be okay. You'd get by. You'd be all right. The fish wouldn't necessarily uh, suffer consequences. But on this last one, uh, food. On food, I would say, don't compromise. With food, go with the best food you can afford. And in my case, I'm feeding a combination of food. I'm feeding them piscine mixed with. Uh, with North Fin and Extreme, and um, there's a little medium in Zoomed in there, Zoomed Spirulina, just to give them a little extra greens. But um, try and go with the best food you can. It'll give you better color, longer life, uh, better behavior. I think if they're well-fed, they behave better. And uh, I think uh, you'll get 
better resistance to disease. And so you're not going to be spending so much time uh, medicating and spending money on medications and worrying about you know, symptoms that they're showing. So the one place in all of this that I've discussed with you that I would say don't cut any corners is with food. Go with the best food you, you can afford. And uh, have I missed have I missed something? If I have, share it in the comments below. We all learn from each other here, right? And let me know, how did you go? Did you go high end? Did you, did you splurge and spend the money? Or did you... Uh, did you cut corners or not necessarily cut corners, but but uh, go with the bargain options when you felt those options would do the job? In my case, I like to do the best by my fish. At the same time, uh, if I can do it in a way that I think is proper, but leaves money in my pocket, money that I can spend for perhaps buying a quality fish that I have to have shipped to me or something, then, then I'll go that route, okay? So... That's it for me. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll talk about this and more things at the Saturday live stream, which is the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. That's Saturday at 11 a.m. Central. That's a noon on the East Coast and 9 a.m. on the West Coast. All right. Hope to see you there. We get into some great discussions, great group of fish keepers. If you're looking for a group that uh, can provide you a lot of advice, where there's no stupid questions, where people can ask whatever they want, and uh, there's no trolls to jump all over you, come on over to the Ben O apostrophe Cichlid Facebook group. And for some behind the scenes to see photos and things you normally would never see on my YouTube channel, come on over to um, and follow on Instagram at ben.o.cichlid. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in, my friend. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.